Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Past is Alive. Hope you guys are all having a good weekend. Because your weekend is about to get ten times better as we rip into the Raleigh Fingers Yak Pack box. My first time ripping into one of these. And could possibly be my last time. I guess we'll see how this one goes. I've seen some pretty terrible things come out of here. I've heard that some okay cards have been pulled out of here. I think somebody told me a YouTuber pulled like two Banes 81 Tops rookie cards. Other than that, I've seen nothing but 80s and 90s commons. So we're going to check this out tonight. These generally go for around 20 25 bucks on eBay, somewhere in that range shipped. Uh, so you be the judge on if these are worth it or not. But seven cards per pack, 24 packs per box. The world-renowned Yak Pack box. That's my box cutters out. I guess I don't have them next to me, so we're going to use a pair of scissors here. Maybe the Frank Thomas no name on front will come out of here, I <laughs> saw somebody say. But let's check it out. Today was actually a freaking awesome day. Uh, I just got back from uh, Pittsburgh a little bit ago and had another big wax haul. I left there with like 16 boxes and... Um, not to mention, went to a card show today, went to the junk store, and then went to Pittsburgh, and also in my P.O. box this morning, I finally, finally, after all these years, I now own the Mark Witten 91 Tops error card, so I could not wait to show that to you guys, but really excited to have this. So thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate it, but uh, finally own the Witten error card. Stoked about that. I'm going to wait until uh, tomorrow for the weekend recap to show you all these wax boxes that I bought these, this guy, these guys do cleanouts, and uh, they had this big card collection. There's a bunch of stuff, a lot of toys too, but mostly all stuff in the 90s, card figures, stuff like that. But um, pretty epic haul, I think so too. Um, but uh, I picked up two 89 per deck boxes for ten dollars a piece, so that's a glimpse of some of the stuff I got. Pretty epic, and pretty excited about it. So uh, that being said, we'll be doing that tomorrow night, checking those out, and. Uh, Tonight is the Yak Pack Boom Slang. I think these are from 2004. I'm pretty sure. It's either 03, 04, somewhere in that range. But yeah, a, a bunch of boxes. Like, I got a bunch of 89 Fleer Cello boxes. Um, I got, what, a 2000 Metal Hobby Box, uh, 2000 per deck. A bunch of cool stuff. We'll check it all out. But the 89 per deck, two boxes for 10 bucks a piece in this warehouse. It was freaking awesome. I couldn't believe it. No 90 tops in there, but I did get two boxes of 91 tops. So I have the Witten now, but uh, I still want to pull it out of a pack. So be checking that out, maybe, and uh, doing that, and maybe even the 89. I think I got like nine boxes, 89 Fleer, like maybe like six or seven cello boxes and like two or three uh, wax boxes. But I want the Randy Johnson Marlboro card too, so that's one we can be looking for. So thanks again, you guys, for being here. Um, my first taste of these tonight... And any odds in this box, Dustin says, uh, it looks like there are star cards or 1 in 20. I'm not sure what they mean by star cards. Maybe that means like, I don't know, like a Mike Scott 90 Tops all-star card. Autograph cards, 1 in 100 packs. Prizes from Raleigh's collection, 1 in almost 5,000 packs, which obviously are probably long expired redemption cards. And a grand prize is a trip to the 2004 World Series, 1 in 500,000 packs. <laughs> Paul Elsa's star cards with Dan Quisenberry. Chuck Chicago, J JJ, will you be taking shots for every repeat? That's not a bad idea. Thank you, Rob G. Appreciate that. That's not a, a bad sign on the back, though. Bobby Abreu, collector's choice card from the mid-90s. Some Probably a better card than... Uh, I see a Matting Lady on upper deck, too. So, so far, not bad. Crown Apple Kid, what's happening? Um, we have an 81 Fleer card. Bake McBride, 84 tops. Bob Welch, Steve Bedrosian. I don't, I don't know what these are. I guess it's contest rules and stuff. Joe's card corral's in the house. What's happening, man? First time uh, opening these for myself. 81 tops. There's Dave Durango and Jay's openings. What's happening, guys? Donnie Baseball, United Per Deck is a good one. That's probably, I don't know, I guess that's considered a star card, so that might be the only one we see out of this entire box. <laughs> Mariano Duncan, Marquise Grissom, and there's a Bobby Abreu early in his career. Not his rookie card, though, but not a bad pack from what I've seen and heard uh, from these. 
But the Donnie Baseball is a good one. Joe's Car Curls is up off next weekend. And maybe we can go out. Hopefully nothing comes up. Yeah, definitely, man. Let me know. I'm going to go out to the Honey Hole tomorrow. Reindeer Studios, what's happening, man? We were off to a good start, and uh, I don't know. It's probably the best luck we'll have all night because it looks like this pack is going to be complete trash. Al Newman, 91 per deck. Saw a bunch of 86 Don Rust today, too. Um, like, all the boxes at this warehouse were $10 a piece. I mean, I could have said $5 a piece, and he probably would have been like, okay. But um, I said I'd give him $10 a piece, and he was fine with that. Rafael Palmiro, best card in that pack. But there's there's two boxes of 86 Don Rust, but they were already all opened. Dr. Old School says, never heard of these before. Basically, it's a grab bag and a pack. It's, that's all it is. Really weird. I don't really know why they decided to make the packs elongated like this. Like, almost like you're open like tops big or something. NZ Breaks has lots of duplicates incoming. Hey, NCJ Sports Card. What's happening, man? There's a Sandberg 92 Fleer on top. I guess that'd be another star card. Not not a bad one. You can find that really in any of your 10-cent boxes at a local card show, though. And we got some duplicates coming now, guys. Are these considered... Do these count as cards? <laughs> I they're counting those or not. There's a bow, 88 Don Russ, with dinged-up corners. And a Tom Gordon, early on in his career. Mike Greenwell. Pooch Lemon says, I like my packs elongated. Oh, you would love these, then. Because they are definitely elongated, and I don't really understand the reason behind that. It really makes sense to me. Hey, Benjamin Black, what's happening? Let's see if we can find the new name on front. Paul says, where's the circuit surveys? I actually sent those to everyone that bought in the break. So now it's on them to send those in to Fleer. These are, these are already annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> what's the point of having that many? Three, three pamphlets in a pack. Keith Mitchell and another 81 tops. Joe's card corrals is 2000 and late for me. So mixed cards. Jim Mintz. <laughs> Jim Mintz and John Watham might have a box of cards soon. That'll be pretty epic. Joseph sees they got these cards out of my trash bin. And we found a couple okay ones so far, leading me to have some sort of hope. Maybe we'll get lucky with ones 81 Fleer and find like a Fernando rookie or. A Baines. A Bobby Abreu again. And more repeats. And there's Galarraga. Ripping right along. 24 packs of commons mostly. Shows card corrals. These packs have awesomely bad potential. Another Marquise Grissom. And looks like we have another Donnie Baseball. So at least uh, some of the repeats are actually star cards. That's not a bad card at all by any means. I said uh, two boxes of 89 per deck for 10 bucks a piece. Absolutely crazy. And I picked up some some decent rookies I didn't have at the card show today. What else did I get? I can't remember. That was Sandberg, 92 Fleer. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out what they consider star cards. Tino. And there's a Fisk. Palmero. Of everyone's favorite, 91 Fleer. Gem Mints is where these boxes sold at card shows back in 04. I'm pretty sure they were sold at Target. I don't know if they're a Target exclusive or what, but uh, they definitely had them at Target at one point. I never honestly heard of them until, I don't know, a few months ago. I didn't even know they existed. Dallas Foster, what's happening, man? Another <laughs> another Donnie Baseball 89 per deck. I'll take it, though. Three of those so far in this box. Mariano Duncan, not so cool with that one, though. Not a big fan of that one. There's Bobby Abreu for the third time in this box. Taco Meats is a hobby was built on 91 Fleer. Jay's opening says, so are these pre-Fairfield boxes? Yeah, pretty much, man. Dragon Fan, Tim, I did not find any more 82 traded Ripkins. Maybe tomorrow I'm going back to the Honey Hole. That's where I got the last one at. Poots says, any cards older than 81 in this? Not that we've seen yet that I've seen. <laughs> Boom Slanks is now your head stop and sell the rest of the packs. I'm having too much fun. But yeah, these are these pamphlets are, are super annoying. A lot of Raphael Palmero in these boxes. And there's another Bow 88 Don Russ. Joe's Card Corral says Yak Pack, not a clever name. James is Mattingly Lot. That's what it seems like. 
There's an 84, a couple 84 tops cards in here. Bruce Benedict. So there's the answer to your question there, Poots. That is a 65 Dallas Green. That's pretty cool, though. I think that's like the oldest card I've seen, I've seen come out of one of these. Tom Gordon. That's actually Tom Gordon's rookie card. Not that most of you probably care, but that's one I'd put in my rookie collection, though. NCJ says, I went yesterday to the Green Dragon Flea Market. No longer wax boxes of any type. That's a shame. I don't know, Bo Jackson. I used to like that card a lot. 1990 score. It's a cool one. Yeah, that, uh, that warehouse today was freaking awesome. Keith Mitchell again. And Artino. Yeah, I left a lot of wax boxes behind. There's a lot of sets that I left behind. I should have went through more stuff. But uh, a lot of it was just in dirty boxes, and there was a lot of it was all in disarray. So I pulled what I could out of there. <laughs> Another Donnie Baseball United for deck. <laughs> the fourth one. Is Raleigh Fingers still alive? He is still alive. There's a Fernando. We're just talking about trying to pull his rookie out of here. Another Fisk. Another Palmero. Another Terry Kennedy from 81 Tops. And another Don Mattingly. Which I'm not going to complain about that. So we rip him through his box pretty quick. And another Tom Gordon. Some more you want Fleer. Yeah, based off of what I've seen online and whatnot, um, I don't know. I'd say our box is pretty good. Jim Minces, were these Raleigh Fingers cards? Yes, they were. Bo Jackson, 88, Don Ross, another Tom Gordon. And we are already getting down to the end of the box already. But um, like I said, I bought a ton of packs today. Like, So I did get, so I got a, I bought a random box of like 91 per deck because it had a bunch of 91 top cello packs in it. So I, I have a few of those. Maybe we can rip some of those if you guys want to. think this box would go this quick tim mccarver 81 fleer i thought it was a social rookie for a second but it's not more of this dumb paper getting real tired of seeing that card tino again and another fisk <laughs> that card always made me laugh <laughs> james Rome says why is don manley not in the hall of fame i think he should be man i think he will get in eventually at least i hope so man Definitely belongs in there, along with other guys like McGriff. Paul L says, John Montefusco could be the new Bad Omen. It's looking that way, man. Danny Heap, why couldn't that have been a strawberry rookie? There's a Dale Murphy. Still a lot of Dale Murphy fans out there. It's a really weird-looking card of Joey Cora. Bo Jackson, 88 Don Russ, Willie Wilson. Dave Durango, the warehouse I'm talking about. Yeah, it's in it's in Pittsburgh, but Yeah, I think like I don't know. There's a bunch of sets there. I, I left a bunch of sets behind. I left like 89 Bone behind. And um I left a bunch of 89 Don Russ boxes because I already have like 10 of them. But uh there's another Tom Gordon, Gary Templeton, 84 tops. <laughs> Let's get one of Jackson's cards, dude, James says. Yeah, there was a binder there. He, he had a couple binders there, too. I looked through. There was one binder he said, um, or I went through it. He said, um, before I went through it, he was like, somebody offered me 800 bucks for this binder. I'm like, let me take a look at that, see why someone offered you 800 bucks for that. And I don't really know why someone would offer that much money because the only things I saw in there, I saw a Boggs 83 Fleer, Boggs 83 Tops, which are two like $10 cards. And um, there's Tino and Carlton again. Then I saw a Gwyn 83 Tops, another $10 card. Then I saw a Henderson rookie, 80 Tops. Like, well, the Henderson, a lot of times I see that card for like 20 bucks nowadays. Other than that, they were all like 80s cards, like second, third year cards. But like someone's gonna pay you eight hundred bucks for this binder? I was like, definitely, <laughs> definitely take it, man. 
<laughs> if they want to give you that much money for it, I don't know why. Because, like, the Henderson, I don't know. If you'd send it in, it looked like it'd probably get, like, a six. There's Palmero again. Another Donnie baseball. And Jay Bell. Truth be told, said he just said that, so he'd be interested in it. He very well may have. He's like, well, the guy first said he'd give me 100 then he said 800 I went And I went through it. I'm like, well, you know, this card's 10 bucks. This is 5 bucks. You're looking at it like, I don't know, if you sold all those separately, you'd probably get like 75 bucks for the, for the whole binder. So I was like, you'd be crazy not to take $800 for that, dude. But he's supposed to, uh, I don't know, he's supposed to keep in touch. There's a Klesko from Pro Cards. Jeff Blauser. Cool Klesko. He's supposed to uh, keep in touch with me and let me know because... That whole house clean out thing is an awesome business. I want to do it. I want to get like a trailer and start doing clean outs. They charge like 800 bucks per trailer load. And then on top of that, they take all the stuff and then they just sell it. Like, and this dude had, there's tons of starting lineups there. There was a bunch of 90s figures. I saw some, there was a good bit of Batman stuff too. Like, there was like a ton of Batman novelty cups. I saw a sealed case of Batman the Animated Series trading cards. Um, what else did I leave behind? I left behind, he had two cases of 89 Don Russ rack packs. I have, I don't know, I have so many 89 Don Russ, I just left them behind, but pretty freaking awesome, though. There's an 85 Tops, and a Bowman Chrome, Richie Sexton, Alan Bennis. <laughs> I thought that said Ed Gein for a second. <laughs> like, oh, that'd be pretty crazy. And there's an 84 Don Russ card, Ed Gein baseball card. That would be pretty creepy. We've got four packs left. Poots Lemon says, is Larry Walker's entry into the Hall of Fame guaranteed Todd Helton will eventually get in? I think Todd Helton will get in someday. I could definitely see that happening. Jeff Twitty. Mike Greenwell, possible new bad omen. Lonnie Smith. And uh, those look familiar, huh? James Reynolds says, you left a Griffey rookie behind? Sacrilege. <laughs> Yeah, there was, I don't know, there was so much stuff in there, man. Like, there there was tons and tons of 89 Don Russ, and I already have tons of 89 Don Russ. So, I, I might even go back tomorrow, I don't know, and get more. I don't know what I would do with them, though. Like, what, you have a ton of Ken Griffey Jr.'s Don Russ rookie to begin with. There's Bob Walk. I want to say that's actually his rookie card, I think. For Joe's card, Corral, there's that funny fist card again. Boom Slang says, John, if you start start that business, you will need a warehouse to hold it all, and you may, you may need a new, a new girlfriend. Yeah, I definitely will need a warehouse to store it all in, but that would be that would be awesome, man, doing house cleanouts. Like, the junk store that I go to every weekend, that's what they, they do. They do cleanouts, and they bring back all this awesome stuff. I'm sure you go through a lot of filthy stuff, too. Like, the warehouse I was in today, um, it smelled like dead bodies in there. <laughs> so I was kind of sketched out walking in. Meeting some strange guy in a uh, secluded warehouse in Pittsburgh. How many dead bodies are hidden in the walls in here? But yeah, he's a cool dude. Alan Wiggins, 84 Tops. And Keith Mitchell again. <laughs> no new girlfriend needed, Brittany says. I think that would be awesome, though. Like He's like, yeah, we come across baseball cards and stuff all the time. Like That would be so much fun, man, doing house cleanouts and... Sure there's probably a lot of filthy stuff you come across, but they were actually the dude that I, uh, the dude that met me there. His he said that they were on the this the show Hoarders like last what it was a couple months ago something like that in like West Virginia. So that's pretty awesome. Can't they have Airwick in there or something? Joe says. <laughs> last pack magic here. There's a Bo Jackson for like the seventh time tonight. Willie Wilson and Tom Gordon again. Would I recommend this box? Absolutely not. I would not recommend spending your money on one of these because they are pretty crappy. You didn't see any of these big prizes over here. I don't know how many star cards we saw. Just a bunch of Don Mattingly 89 upper decks. Not worth 21 bucks. <laughs> Chuck says, what's up, JJ? Ed Gein and Dead Bodies. LOL. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would not recommend getting one of those. I don't know, unless you want to try your luck. 20, 20 bucks is not bad to spend for some fun ripping, but then you're stuck with a bunch of crappy commons more than likely. But uh, like I said, I do have some other packs. If you want to rip some more, we can definitely do that. Up to you guys. 
91 top cello though. I feel like you might be able to pull the Witten, uh, Mark Witten air card out of there. So hang tight for like 30 seconds and I'll grab some more packs. Check them out. So fun that I have here. Big box of fun. Grab some 88 Don Russ pack, somebody said. Yak pack, no more. Will not indulge myself in that again, but this is a random box that was uh, in that warehouse. Kind of. Uh, see, we got a bunch of 91 top cello in here, or jumbo packs, whatever you want to call them, but a ton of 91 upper deck. Usually you can get 91 upper deck boxes for five or 10 bucks. But I like to have those. I send them off to people here and there and stuff, and maybe you can find the short print in there, but we got a bunch of these. I think this whole box is five bucks. So I thought that was a good deal, especially because 91 tops blocks aren't necessarily the cheapest of them all compared to some other ones like a cello box of these is probably like i don't know 30 bucks somewhere around there i would think this is this might actually be a full box i didn't even realize how many were actually in here but good bits maybe we can find the uh witten air there's also a hills team set in here too which is pretty sweet very dirty caked in dust yes yeah, so we have I don't know, close to a whole box of these. But yeah, could not pass on these for five bucks. Maybe we'll find like a few chippers in here. Always fun to pull that card. I have no room to put this dirty box. Hills is where the toys are, they, no doubt about it. Maybe this is a full box, I don't know, I didn't count them. I'd rather find Mike Greenwell again. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can pull um, one of these Witten Air cards. There's a bunch of Air variations in this set. Nothing as high dollar as the Witten. If you go by Beckett, which most people don't, but some people do, um, Beckett books that card at 150 bucks for that Witten. I got lucky and was able to get it for 50. I had some eBay bucks to use, and then the uh, seller kindly took his time shipping it. I think it was 10 day handling time for him to just to ship it out. Boom Slinks says, toss that dirty box in the closet right on top of those GI Joes. <laughs> so some more 91 tops. And I have two boxes of these. Uh, two wax boxes of these I picked up today too. Just because. I still want to pull that Witten out of a pack. There's Dave Durango. It says, don't bad mouth Greenwell. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that, man. Paul L. is a big Mike Greenwell fan. Yeah, if you haven't checked out Dave Durango yet, please do so. Haven't caught any of your streams in a while, Dave, but I definitely go back and watch the replays. I just never up that late when you guys are, are up. There's the Big Mac. Not the error card, though. This is the corrected version with a decimal point there. Jay Hadley sent me the... Uh, the error card the other day. Donnie Baseball is possibly becoming a new an, an omen. Not a bad one, of course. A lot of Donnies, and I have no problem with that. Yeah, the error card, James, is the uh, the decimal point is missing. Dave Durango, I'm trying to read your comments here. Todd Beast's Witten error cards are very early in the print run. And Dave says, the Gator was a career 303 hitter, good player. Is that what you want me to read, Dave? And there's John Wathen. Yeah, I got no problem with Mike Greenwell. Actually, I actually used to be a pretty big fan of his back in like the late 80s. There's Dave Justice's second year card, Anna Sosa's second year. Fisk, Devon White, 
I don't know if I'll open all these or not, but, uh, hey, there's Criterion Racer. Thanks, man. Appreciate that and you being here. Dave Durango says, I got a run, man. That was fun. If you're up later, come by the stream. I want to talk about something. If not, I'll send you an email tomorrow. Yeah, for sure, man. I probably will be up later, so um, I'll check out and see what time you're doing that, and I'll pop in there for sure. No work tomorrow, so I definitely will do that. Thanks for stopping by, Dave. Appreciate it, man. There's a Ripken record breaker. Shane Andrews. I don't remember that card ever being in this set. Another Mandela effect. Felix Jose, Gold Cup. There's a Bonds All-Star. Ryan says the junk wax cards ain't worth much, but it sure was a fun time to be a kid. You hit it right on the head on that one, man. No doubt about it. That's why I like buying these and looking at them. They really aren't worth much, but uh, I don't know. It's definitely takes me back to a better time. I think so, at least. Like, I don't know. Most most new modern cards, I don't even, I don't care for the design of them. I feel like they mostly all look the same. These are all original. As a Conseco, like especially newer Bowman, newer Bowman kill me, man. Looking at those, like they are so plain look, plain and generic looking compared to like Bowman from the nineties, like ninety five Bowman, ninety six. Um, I don't know. I just think Bowman look like Bowman cards look like tops now for the most part. Doesn't do nothing for me. There's a Greg Swindell. And there's Mike Greenwell. Dave. Speaking of him. There's Boom Slang. Says, I have a bid on a box of Yak. Starting to feel like my channel is falling behind or out of date. Gotta keep the passes alive. Thanks, Boom Slang. Appreciate that, man. I'm sure most of you are sub to Boom Slang. If you're not, check him out. He's always putting new videos out there. Boom Slang's been around for... Quite a while now. I feel like he's been with me since like the beginning of my channel. So thanks, Boom Slang. I really appreciate that, man. Looking forward to watching you rip that box of yak if you get it. There's a Walker second year. Welcome to the hall, Walker. Zane Smith, that card always pissed me off. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know, pretty hideous looking picture of him. Between him and Eric Plunk. Both of them uh, got under my skin big time. There's, there's that car we saw like eight of in the Yak Pack box. That <laughs> Dragon Fan Tim says you would poo your pants if these are Desert Storm packs. How crazy would that be? Or like the two boxes that I got of these that uh, I'll show you tomorrow. Maybe those are Desert, Desert Shield. That would be nuts. That would be absolutely nuts. I don't trust any Desert Shield boxes anymore. Uh, like I said, I saw a ton of those pop up on Mercari, the app Mercari. If you guys aren't familiar with it, you probably don't want to be because people selling cards on there, I, sometimes you can find a decent deal. If there's any cards posted on there for a decent price, they're sold like in 30 seconds. I swear, it's Paul O'Neill. Like somebody posted like a Jeter 93 Bowman, I think, for like 10 bucks the other day. It was gone in like 30 seconds. But then there's other people posting like Jose Rio. 1991 tops for 200 bucks so there's definitely an entertainment value to it there like there's a lot more of that on there of people posting like crap cards for 200 bucks no, not even a regular uh corrected mark witten so far so i don't know how long i don't know how many more of these i'm gonna rip i got a broccoli pot pie in the oven it's probably my favorite food of all time and it's got 13 minutes left so we got 13 minutes left for this video. Broccoli pot pie. If you haven't had one, you need to, you need to try it. There's a shilling. Didn't quite make Cooperstown this year. Dave Steeb for Joe's Card Corral. So strawberry for Jersey if he's still in here. <laughs> Paul else's broccoli pot pie. What the hell? There he, ah, oh, there it is. I thought I was going to be it for a second. I like never come across the corrected version of that, but now we can put them side by side. Sweet. I didn't have this, uh, the corrected version, so it's cool to have it. But that's the air for you guys that aren't familiar with it. Hand over the border. Pretty hard to track down. <laughs> Boom Slings says, John, where's your personal assistant? <laughs> 
I need to get one, man, because my house is a freaking mess. To the point where I don't even know what to do with it. And I just keep buying more. Like, I, I told myself, like, I'm not buying any more base. I'm not buying any cards this weekend or, like, big collection of cards and that stuff. And then I freaking go to a warehouse and get 16 boxes. <laughs> 16 boxes. I couldn't pass on it, though. You'd have to be crazy to not buy 89 per deck boxes for 10 bucks a piece. It's freaking insane. <laughs> Paul Elsa's your house is becoming the new junk store, John. Yeah, my house is probably worse than a junk store, man. It is a big cluttered crap mess. There's a Todd Zeal. Looks like he someone gave him a hickey. Like a really rough hickey too. Like his neck's like bleeding. Either that or he got, I don't know, attacked by a vampire or something. That's a creepy card. Melito Perez. So we found the Witten. Mike York always creeped me out too. I don't know what it is about him. <laughs> Joe says your house might be the new honey hole. <laughs> it's, it seriously could be. I don't know what I have anymore. At all. There's Craig B. It says, let's give some thumbs up to the best YouTube channel. You broke what tonight? Yak packs? Let's help John get back on his feet with some thumbs up. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate that, man. I'm not sure if you're in here for the yak pack box or not, but... It was pretty crappy, but it, I think it was better than most of the ones that were open. When we get like six Don Manley 89 per decks. Something like that. Yeah, I definitely would not buy another one, and I would not recommend it. Joseph B., he was in here. He bought one recently, I think for like $18 shipped, which is uh, probably the cheapest I've ever heard of them going for. But they're like selling like crazy, too. Like People are buying the hell out of these Yak Packs, and I can't figure out why. After, based off everything that I've seen, Juan Gonzalez, like you're better off. What is that? Seven cards are back. So you're only getting like a little over what you get in one Fairfield box for five bucks, and you're you're more than likely going to get better cards in a Fairfield box. I'd almost guarantee it, a hundred percent of the time. As Robin Ventura Gold Cup, <laughs> B fishing to zeal bloody neck scab error card two hundred bucks. Hey James Reynolds, thanks man, appreciate that. The thumbs up. Thank you guys for being here. Let's see if we can find uh, something. Even like a chipper. We haven't even seen a chipper yet. Uh, Gem Mint, the 1965 Tops Common. That, that was a cool surprise. I, I definitely was surprised when we saw it. There's Carl Everett. Actually, um, Mike sent me his Desert Shield card the other day. So that was awesome. I like that Everett, Everett rookie card. There's a Bly 11. And look who it is. There is no escaping him ever. Nice Frank Thomas, second year. Always like that, Frankie. And another Don Mattingly. Seen a lot of him tonight. That's not a bad thing by any means. More Donnie and less Eric Plunk. Let's see if we can at least find a Chipper Jones rookie in here come across a bunch of that uh, card recently. I think the last card, I pulled that out of a pack, I want to say the last time we ripped that, and I swear if I sent it in, it would probably get a 10. I don't normally think that when I look at most of my cards, but I was pretty stoked about it. Not that I'll ever send it in, because I don't, I don't ever do that, but it was fun to think about sending it in. <laughs> I think I got a high grade. Randy Tomlin, that could possibly be an error card. I can't remember what the error is, though, but Ryan B says, I have two videos of 90 Tops up on YouTube. That's pretty sweet. I'll have to check those out. There's an Alomar again. I always like that Van Slyke. Not seeing like, anything that great in here at all whatsoever. But 91 Tops was kind of a crappy year for rookies. I like the best ones made it into the traded set other than the Chipper Jones. Jose Uribe, oh, Paul Elsa's, <laughs> Randy Tallon brings back the 94 for deck break. I forgot about that. He was definitely a bad omen there. That night, he was a bad omen. Or Dave Hollins was like a big prospect back in 1990. Remember, like, PCing his cards. There's a Yount, Bobby Thigpen. Kevin Moss, speaking in 1990, prospect bus. I guess Dave Hollins, he was around for a while. But he definitely didn't pan out. To... There's that fist card again. 
<laughs> Arthur Brooks says, I told my buddy he is really ugly. He said he has a lot more money than you do. Oh, well. <laughs> That's funny. Paul else says, Randy Tomlin has to be a permanent bad omen. It seems like he might be. Let's see uh, what else we can find in here before I take a hiatus for the night. I always like that Clemens car. It was always a cool one. Fenway. Sparky Anderson actually is smiling at one of his cards. I cannot believe that that's actually a, really thing, a real thing. He always looks so pissed off and hateful on all of his cards. <laughs> Joe's card crosses Dennis Cook. There's a pocket. Sandberg for Craig B. Still getting some stuff together to send you, Craig. There's a Matt Williams. Another Greg Swindell and another Mike Greenwell. And uh, rip a few more of these. Six minutes of this broccoli pot pie time. I'm pretty excited about it. It's a Cecil Fielder on top here. 91 tops aren't really the funnest. The most fun to look at. And there's a Dave Bergman with a poop stain on in the back of the card. I'm not really sure what that's all about. But Joe's Card Corral, if you're still in here, I know that you know the story behind the Mel Hall 91 Tops, the poop stain on it. Had a fecal matter stain on, on what was it, on the front or the back of it? One of our neighborhood friends had this Mel Hall card. I think he had it in a top loader, too, for whatever reason. But it definitely had fecal matter on it. So you can Seiko All-Star. And there's a Griffey All-Star card, too. I haven't seen that one yet. It's a cool one. Bo Jackson. <laughs> Joe's card crosses. What's with the poop stains in 91? Ron Kittle always pissed me off, too. That card is creepy. I don't know what it is about it. Bob Walk. A lot of weirdos. That's a cool box card. I like that one. <laughs> I'll never forget Mel Hall. Dragon Fan Tim says Harrisburg. That's what it is. It's Harrisburg is spelled wrong. Harriburg. That's what it is. Thank you for that, Dragon Fan Tim. <laughs> Ron Kittle pulling his inner Sabo. He definitely resembles Sabo a lot in there. Kittle stole Eric Plunk's eyeglasses. There's a Ripken. Jay Buner. There's that Todd Zeal hickey neck card. And Sabo is going to be behind him. That's quite a duo there. There's our buddy. Still have not reached out to him yet, but I definitely want to sometime soon. Corey Snyder looks really haggard in that card. He was all the craze back in the late 80s, too. There's Alex Cole. Sabo and Cole in the same pack. That is pretty freaking epic. Cole following in Sabo's footsteps, even in the pack. <laughs> Dallas says Sabo. I'm glad I only paid five bucks for this box because it has not delivered anything yet. There's that creepy Tom Hankey card again. Having the time of his life. You can never have enough Rex Specs. Edgar Martinez. So, I don't know if Chad Snyder's in, or not Chad Snyder. Chad Hopkins is in here or not, but uh, there's some 91 Tops cards he needs to, to put together a set. So, I'll go through these again, too. I'm still looking for the other ones that you sent me a list of. I found most of them, but... Go through these and see if we can find the other ones that you need. Seen a lot of Jeff Blauser today, too. Yeah, we definitely have seen a lot of him. There's an Eddie on top. Pull the, the George Bush USA card. <laughs> You're not seeing anything good in here. What is going on, Henderson? I don't know. I mean, we've seen it, like the Griffey All Star card is a Ryan record breaker. Pretty cool. But Swindell again. And Mike Greenwell and them, they're always together. Anything good is in, I uh, haven't seen any Chipper Jones rookies yet, which is pretty crazy. Because we opened, what, like freaking 15 packs of these already? <laughs> what gives? Not exactly, you really search these either. It'd be pretty difficult to rip these open and seal them back up since they just tear to shreds. We got two minutes left of this 
fun evening of 91 Tops. Let's see if we can find any more poop stain cards in here. No Chipper Jones. I can't believe that. That's pretty wild. <laughs> Dallas says, Brawly Pop Pie is almost done. It is, man. I can taste it already. Those are freaking amazing. You gotta, you guys gotta try them. They're awesome. <laughs> Paul else is the oven in the corner of your toy room. I wish it was, man. That'd be convenient. It'd be real convenient. There ain't, uh, there ain't no room for an oven in this toy room, man. There ain't no, there's, there's barely enough room for another wax box. So good thing I bought a ton of them today. There's a Griffey base. That's a cool one. B fishing says I broke a 91 box the other day. No wittens, but pulled a clean chipper. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty much a lot of fire stars, but still fun. It is still fun, anyways. Looking for certain cards. I primarily just want to look for that witten. And there's Dennis Cook. Always looking hideous. Bobby Bo. Yeah, I definitely liked 91 Tops a lot back in 91, 92, in that era. I used to definitely used to buy packs of these all the time. And Eric definitely used to buy a lot of them, too. I just knocked over a giant pile of 91 Tops. Oh, my. Dennis Cook is cooking a broccoli pot pie. He probably was in that, in that picture. He looked like he was thinking about something good. Ronnie Walden draft pick. There is a Nolan Ryan. First card of the set. Pretty nice looking one, too. Center on that one is nice. And also chipper. And that one is pretty crappy looking. Not the best centering on there, but pretty cool. Gwyn, Nolan Ryan, and Chipper all in the same pack. Where's the Witten? You in here somewhere? Whoa, is that a creepy looking car? <laughs> what is going on with Jeff McKnight? It looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. That definitely caught me off guard there. We found the Chipper Jones in time for the Broccoli Pot Pie. That's all I have for you tonight. I'm going to keep these packs. I don't know. I'll probably send them off to, to people here and there. So that's all I got for you tonight, but I cannot wait for tomorrow. We'll probably do a live stream because I have some other stuff to open. I bought like two um, two two jumbo packs of 2011 tops today, too, at the card show. They're like $2.50 apiece. I couldn't pass on them because Freddie Freeman rookie card in there. I don't have it. So hopefully we can maybe pull that. bunch of short prints in that. Um, so we have that and also maybe we'll open some packs 89 upper deck tomorrow too, but I want to show you the big haul that I got. I also bought an action figure at a toy store today. D and E collectibles in Pittsburgh picked up an action figure there. Uh, one that I used to really, really like a lot. So that is all coming up tomorrow on the weekend recap. Probably, I don't know, eight o'clock, eight 30. So hopefully see you guys then, but until then enjoy the rest of your night and hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon.